Live on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Oh, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> hello. Whoa, what was that? Uh, it's um, it's my wave pad yelling at me because I didn't close out the last ones. Oh. I'm getting yelled at. Uh, there was an elephant in the room. No, it's the the warning thing of you're stupid and you didn't do something. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. George's computer. So I'm actually going to unplug some of these mics so I can hear myself because the more splitters I have, there we go. Yeah, mo wires, mo problems. Yeah, exactly. Hey, flash that tap. What? Flash that tat. I can see it on your forearm, man. Nice. I'll uh, oh, once uh, once we get a free opportunity, I'll hop up to the camera. Good evening, Heath Moss and Joseph Schultz and those who are watching. What's going on, Angelo Chavez? So, for those watching and uh, have your Masonic questions, if you're not a Mason or you are a Mason and you have a Masonic question, um, you can fire in your questions and we're going to answer them live. Uh, I put uh, the phone number to call in, uh, and we we will hear yourself live. The only thing we ask is if you are watching while you have a question, to please turn the volume down on your on whatever device you're watching from, so that uh, we don't get a a double echo voice thing. But we've got it all set up. It took me uh, me and Ken I don't know five six minutes. It's kind of insane. <laughs> yeah, that's a new record. Really, it is a new record. For his thoughts, so. All right, I'm going to start it up. Ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's start recording in five, four, three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Freemasons Podcast with your hosts, Right Worship Brother George Mudry and Worshipful Brother Ken. We're up here tonight. In tonight's episode, we are going to be doing uh, open mic, which is you can call into the show uh, for those listening on. Uh, the actual Apple iTunes. It's too late. You already missed it. But um, we are going to be, you can call into the show. You could ask him a sign of questions. You will be live on the show. But first, we got to do what we always do. Ooh, likes. Likes. And uh, we have uh, Adam Nelson, Steve Adam Rubin, Chris Tomasino, Omar Martinez, Jeremy Mayer, Brian Autry, Brian Looney, and Adrian. Poiser. Nice. Beautiful. Welcome, friends and brothers. So, let's get into it. Right hand to arms. To arms. Ready. Ready. Aim. Aim. Fire. Good fire. Fire off. Together, brother. Oh, I couldn't slam it. Ready? Vivat, vivat, vivat. Vivat. Hey, that worked out well. That was pretty synchronized. Pretty, pretty good. Not too, too bad. Yeah. But so uh, for the for those who are interested, um, you can call into the show uh, again. Number should be up in the the episode description. Uh, there's a two zero three seven six eight six four two nine number. Uh, that so will... incidentally, you think we're going to get any Illuminati folks? Calling I would us? love it. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Yes. Illuminati, 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 Illuminati. Illuminati. <laughs> that would be awesome. Can't wait. How you doing over there in quarantine, Ken? I'm doing okay, brother. You know, it's um, a lot of people that I've talked to. We actually did a uh, call them all thing with all the brothers of our lodge. <clears throat> I talked to a few of our brothers tonight, and um, the overwhelming majority of them said, we're all doing well, we're okay, but we're all going stir crazy. A little bit. And I'm like, man, I can relate. Because I literally, I don't think I've left my house in like a week. I think I went out for some plumbing supplies about a week ago and just like ran into the store and dropped them in my car and came home and did the decon shower and everything. Um, I'm not, I'm, I think I'm doing okay. Like I'm not really freaking out or anything like that. Um, like the family isn't getting to me. Like we're, you know, we've kind of got a routine down and everything so that we're not getting on each other's nerves. So amazingly, in my little 1,200 square foot home, um, we're all still sane. That's good. How are you doing? Well, um, I feel like I'm starting to develop a drinking problem. But on the flip side of that, 
Uh, I've been working out a lot, a little bit more. Been uh, well again. I'm, I'm, I'm still working, but uh, I'm only, I'm missing two days out of the week uh, for my kids. But uh, mm. been uh, doing a little bit of working out, trying to get back in shape because we all know the amount, you know, of, you know, people sitting on their ass at home and. You know, you're not really doing anything. You're under quarantine. You can't go to the gyms. You can't do anything. But you know, running, stress eating, stress eating. No, yeah. no, you can. Uh, no, and drinking. Number one, yeah, you gain weight like yep. crazy when you drink. So, and not that I'm. I was joking about the, you know, having an issue problem. I do. I do not have an alcohol problem. <laughs> yeah, we're not quite there yet. No, 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 no. Uh, but it's, it's very easy to sit on your ass and do nothing. You become stagnant, malignant or whatever you will. And you just kind of sit there and do nothing. So I've gotten into working out a little bit and then, uh, Ken, maybe you can narrate to the camera what, uh, everyone's seeing. Oh, what is this? I'm getting a connection is poor. Lost Ken. How is Ken's network poor? All right. We'll try calling him back. I know my network's not poor. Anyway, uh, I'm going to call Ken back momentarily and uh, see what happens. Ken didn't pay his bill, so clearly he has a drinking problem. <laughs> As he said, yeah, I'm not drinking that whiskey, though, uh, Nathan. What happened? I have no idea. It said your network connection was poor, and it booed you right off it. <laughs> I mean, my uh, my connection's pretty good. I can hear myself in the background for some reason. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm hardwired here at my house. froze, and I could still hear you. And I was like, hey, hey. Hey, I'm still here. You were like, oh, he lost Ken, and then you hung up on me. I don't know. These things happen. Technology. DJ George you know. in the house. That's nice. Yeah, DJ yeah. George. I got two computers in front of me. But, oh, well, getting back into uh, what we've been doing, uh, this happened the other day. Oh, yeah, the tattoo. I'm going to have to describe it for those of you that are uh, listening on the actual podcast stream. So what, we, what George has here is a uh, square and compasses the standard Masonic symbol with the old skull and crossbones in the middle, which is uh, memento Mori as yep. uh, we've discussed on previous episodes. And uh, he's got the, I think I saw and tell me if I'm wrong. You want me to bring it back uh, up the Kevin? point within the circle as well. My headphones don't go very far, but it's actually the symbol for the Saints, John and yes, the omnipotent. Yep. And I got that uh, from a brother, Alex DeFranzo. We, and uh, you know, people, Started breaking my stones a little bit about it, saying, oh, were you six feet away? And I said, no, I did it by myself in the basement of my house near the septic tank, and I did it with a melted coat hanger and a rusty yeah. pair of scissors. So. <laughs> oh, whatever. I mean, everything was sprayed down in alcohol and bleach prior. So well, Let's I mean, be real. You get, you're probably okay. I'm on top of that. So, you know, first off, we didn't do it where he works. I want to be clear about that. That did not right. happen because all tattoo parlors are closed down now. Yes. But let's talk about tattoo parlors. I think personally they are more sanitary than a friggin' hospital. Um, yeah, 99.9% .9 of the time. I know a few tattoo artists, and they hold themselves and their establishment to what yeah. I would consider to be a higher standard than some well, not necessarily in some hospitals, but definitely in some doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. Like, they all have to go through the same, at least in the state of Connecticut. And it might mm -hmm. be different from, you know, from state to state and different jurisdictions right. and everything. But at the very least, they have to take um, certain mandated safety courses and, mm -hmm. you know, some courses that are kind of like medically oriented to make sure that they are, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just having a kitchen and going through food safety training like these. Right. These guys all have to go through like pretty rigid mm -hmm. training on rigid sta against rigid standards on uh, keeping everything clean and making sure that people don't get infectious diseases. So, mm -hmm. if anybody can keep you safe, I would say a tattoo artist would probably be pretty close to the very hot top of that list. Yep, in my opinion, anyway. And then when we were done, we basically cut each other's fingers and did a blood oath. Uh, yeah, that's a joke. That's a joke. That, didn't, ha yeah. that didn't happen. There's didn't happen. Um, and I'm gonna have more work done. Uh, I'm itching. I always felt like I had. What happens? I always felt like I was like 
odd shaped and i know i'm gonna get hell for that but i have one on both shoulders i got one on my right arm right yeah ken he's already he's already yeah you know what's gonna happen after this yeah, discord's already on fire but um I, so i always had this one on my right arm but i never one had on my left arm so i always had three tattoos and you know whatever what do you have on your right arm it's actually a, a heart excuse me it's a skull inside of a heart i have a session with skulls. Okay. So let's just be clear about that and that's that's I have, i'm trying to turn it so you can see I don't yep. feel like getting up again, but uh, it's a heart inside of a skull. And on top, it's got Chinese letters and it means a uh, life and death. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I've never noticed that before for some reason up here. I got the drunken, uh, the drunken Marine Corps tattoo. And that's, we won't get into that. That was a drunken night. I got tattooed and I, it's a, I don't know, another skull, vampire skull or whatever the hell. I don't know. I was blitzed. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> right of passage, man. Everybody's got to get one, I guess, in the core, right? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, the other side over here, I have a, a demon on my arm that's like tearing through the skin. Uh, uh, but I have, so, you know, originally I had the the uh, trifecta of, uh, of tattoos, but now I have three skulls. So I guess mm. I still got three, right? A lot of anger, a lot of uh, you know, I was like, fascination with mortality. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it's memento mori, man. Man, you know, mm. if you live your if life I, preparing for death, you know, you'll always be remembering the afterlife. Uh, I know what you talk about with your therapist all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, as you notice, uh, the ginger's not here. Um, he's he's working late and, you know, he's uh, he's getting good and torn through the ringer with work. So, and, mm. you know, everybody thought that, like, being home, oh, I could work from home. This is going to be great. Uh, no, working from home nah. sucks even harder. <laughs> yeah, it kind of sucks. It's like I'm half college for half, uh, like, not college professor, but, you know, half teacher and half father and, I guess, another half employee. And there's probably some other halves thrown in there, too. It's, right. <laughs> It's difficult, man. I mean, I get like an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 40 minutes of my day back just by not commuting. Mm. But that time gets sucked up pretty pretty easily. Right. Fine. So if anybody uh, wants to call into the show, has any Masonic questions or anything who is either a Mason or a non-Mason or wants to ask anything about uh, me and Ken, uh, any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, or anything that they want to talk about in Freemasonry, uh, the line's open. You call whenever you want, but we're going to... We'll, we'll answer to the extent that we're able, yeah, depending yeah, on what the question is, of course. Yep, absolutely. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I've been uh, pretty much just getting tattooed. That's all I do. <laughs> Actually, this is my first Masonic tattoo. I've never had a Masonic tattoo before. Uh, there was another tattoo that I was leaning toward, but I uh, changed it at the moment. You know, I'd really like to get one soon. Um now that I know that there's a brother in the area uh, that does Masonic tattoos, I, mm. you know, I think it would be awesome to get a Masonic tattoo from an actual brother. So yep. maybe I'll wait until all this stuff kind of dies down a little bit. Um, but I do have some ideas. I had a past master tattoo that I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the old style. And some of our, I think some of our European and, you know, especially our English brothers might, might appreciate this, but there is a, uh, a past master symbol that's sort of, it's not like a full square. It's almost like a half square. I've seen that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's got like an oak, the oak leaf clusters. And so it's an, it's an old past masters jewel design um, from Europe, I think is where it originated. Um, and I just, I've always loved that design. It's got the 47th problem of Euclid inside the little jewel that hangs off of it. Um, so I'll, I'll post a picture of it to the, uh, the Freemasons podcast page. I don't think I've actually ever posted it before. Um, but I'd love to get some brothers' opinions on that. Um, I have no idea where I would put it. I'm thinking maybe on the leg. I don't know. That's where uh, Worshipful Brother Danny got his Masonic tattoo. Uh, it, it would hurt. <laughs> where on the leg? You know? Where on your leg? Oh, um, probably on the side, I think. Like, putting it on the front of your leg, I, I hear tattooing over your shin is, you know, kind of painful and it doesn't really heal that great yeah well you're, but, you're uh, going over the bone i mean yeah so. yeah plus i've gotten like severe sunburn on like the fronts of my legs before to the you? point where like no. skin's just not right like I, they were like radiation <laughs> damage so i don't know if i should be like getting people needling or like that just seems like <laughs> medically a really bad idea 
<laughs> but I don't know. I'll get an expert's opinion. I'll go talk to our brother. You get uh, you get sunburned on your legs? No. Yeah, it's amazing, right? <laughs> I was kayaking up in New Hampshire, and Who I didn't put kayaks? any sunscreen on because I probably had a couple beers. <laughs> and it was noon on probably like the fifth or sixth of July or something like that, and I was kayaking for about an hour. And uh, when you have a skin that never really sees the sun and you expose it for that long with no sunscreen, man, let me tell you, the damage that you do is, that's pain, brother. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, speak of pain, this one didn't actually hurt too bad. Um, hurt a lot less Well, yeah, than I, I mean, you weren't going up to. inside your elbow or anything like that, but um, when you do the inside of your bicep, do you have any on the inside of your bicep? Uh, no, 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 no. It's just on the outside on your tricep, right? Yeah, yeah just uh, I got it on the shoulder and then, you know, on the forearms. Full yep. shoulder, so when you forearms. go, what I've found is, I mean, I've got, I don't have a lot of tattoos. I've just got the one on my back and the one on my arm. But what I found was the only thing that I really found painful is when they go inside. I guess my camera's kind of low. When they go inside your bicep. And this part right here was probably the most painful thing um, I can remember experiencing because it feels like somebody's jamming a knife into your armpit. I don't know why. It's like some kind of weird referred pain. It has something to do with how the nerves are set up. But it felt like somebody was like, you know, jabbing me with like a very, very sharp instrument right in my armpit. So that was not fun. But it was tolerable. I didn't cry. I'll say that. I didn't cry and I didn't scream. Uh, the backside of my, my arm, when it got to the backside over here, uh, mm -hmm. that, that hurt. Um, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. Much less than I thought it was going to be. And again, I it's feeling good. You're like, uh, putting all the yep. like vitamin D ointment or whatever they give uh, you. Yeah. I've been using aquaphor, which is, yeah. Aquaphor. Yep. So, uh, but, um, yeah, I'm getting a couple more, uh, the Brits aren't going to like the ones I'm getting, but <laughs> mm, well, we don't have to tell them. No, we don't have to tell them. <sighs> yeah, just there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Which way to the gun show? <laughs> it's pointing at the flag, but yeah. So anyway, uh, you were saying that you got you had a uh, you had a Zoom meeting the other day, correct? Yeah, so uh, which one was I in? Like, all the days are running together now. The last one I did was uh, the third district um, fellowship Zoom meeting, I guess. Uh -huh. Um, that was like, was that yesterday? Yes, I'll it was you, yesterday. Man, like this working from home thing is killing me because, yeah, because the days literally run together. But yeah, last night, I think there were only three brothers, three or four brothers that popped on. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, Doug Barry sent me the link and I was literally like mid eating dinner and I'm like, oh, I'll get yeah. back. I'll, I'll let you know where I'm at afterward. And yeah. Yeah. And we do it once a week. I mean, you know, it's going to attend. This is going to, to kind of ebb and flow. Um, the first time he did it, I think, was the week prior, and we had, mm. you know, like almost a, an unsustainable number of brothers on the call. There were like 15 guys, and it's like everybody was kind of talking over one another. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really hard to kind of pull the conversation. I mean, to do a meeting or something like that for work over Zoom is one thing, because usually you have like one person who's driving things, one right. person who's presenting, whatever. Mm. Uh, but in a Zoom meeting where everybody's just trying, you know, trying to, you know, kind of go through the entire list and see how everybody's doing and that kind of thing. And you got all these little side conversations, like it's difficult to manage. I found, um, but it's fun. It's, it, I still think it's worth it. Um, and I fully encourage any brother that, um, you know, is really missing lodge. See if your lodge is doing something like that. Um, and if they're not put something together yourself, there's a lot of free ways that you can do it. You don't have to have a zoom account. Um, you don't have to do like, the free zoom meeting that, um, you know, cuts you off after 40 minutes or whatever you can do like a Facebook messenger group mm -hmm. and then do a group call and ring everybody at once. There's, if you do a Google search for free video conferencing, I'm sure there's like tons of apps out there that you can use. Um, and just check up on your brothers and see how they're doing. Um, get a phone list of all the brothers in your lodge and call the brothers that are a little bit older and see how they're doing. Uh, you'd be surprised how far a call can go. Right. Uh, Nathan Moss says, uh, I think it would cost me a fortune to ring that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, if you want to call in, it's uh, 
it wouldn't be on you wouldn't be on the line we literally answer you, you ask the question and then hang up and then we we will answer it after on the show but uh watch brother greg schultz are you broadcasting on youtube yet and did you figure out the nitro video chat um no mm. we're uh, we we do post our episodes on youtube but we're still on facebook we're still doing facebook live uh, i've still been able to switch over to the um the old version and until they stop allowing me to switch over to the classic version of the uh version or the old uh system that they used uh we're gonna keep on facebook um we have a lot more followers on facebook than we do youtube um who are active at least watching um and uh, the nitro video chat yeah so discord which is uh part of the patreon package when you sign up for patreon um we just upgraded to nitro video chat which is basically um you can See, so I haven't quite figured it all out yet, but I was trying to see if it was all, it's like a Zoom where you'd have, you can like group call everybody, right? Um, I've only been able to figure out, and again, I've only played with it for two days now. Uh, I've only been able to figure out that um, you can direct message people through Discord. Follow what I'm getting at? So you can direct message um, video chat with another Discordian or guy on discord uh, but i haven't quite figured out if i have to start another channel but i will i'll be ironing that out as soon as i have a free opportunity to do so yeah if you want to tinker with it later on just let me know and i'll you know i'll fire my app up and see if mm -hmm. can make any sense out of it too um you know what brother nathan moss you could always call um right worshipful brother george collect i don't know if that's something that you guys know how to do but if you call collect it means that he'll have to pay for the call you know what you can do to uh, brother Nathan. You know what you can do too is I think you could actually hit me up through my main Facebook page, um, and uh, if you yeah, I didn't even consider like long distance or international no, calling charges. Like, but you never really even think about it when you have a cell phone. But yeah, yeah it'd be maybe to do it over Skype or something like that. Oh, you call better. me through Facebook Messenger on my main link. There you go. Contact him through Facebook Messenger. That'll because Facebook good. loves the Freemasons podcast. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm on my own main page, so there shouldn't be a problem. So uh, if you guys have a question, you can, uh, if you're friends with me on Facebook, uh, which is George Andrew Mudger V, you can uh, you can send me a message through there, and I'll be, or you can video chat with me, or whatever, however you want to do it. You can call me through Facebook as well. Uh, so, what do you think, Ken? What do you think is going to be – how do you think Lodges or Freemasonry is going to adapt to everything that's been going on? What is your um, opinion? you think Lodger is going to jump right back into it, or you think there's going to be a, a slow kind of like having to trust it again? No, I mean, I think once the, uh, the, the government and the powers that be in these various jurisdictions say, look, now is the time that, you know – we have whatever infrastructure we need in place, you know, rapid testing or whatever needs to be done so that um, groups of people can, you know, be reasonably assured to be safe and gather in large groups again. Once that happens, I think, you know, people are going to start going back to schools, colleges are going to reopen, um, maybe sporting events, stuff like that. Um, and then going back to lodge is going to be, I think, kind of a natural progression. I don't think anybody's going to, to worry too much about it. Right. Um, as far as how long that's going to take to happen, I have no idea. I mean, there's experts that have all kinds of statistical models and stuff to try to predict this, and that's not my area of expertise. Right. But I think one of the good things to come out of all this is what we were just talking about, right? That fact that we were doing the call them all thing, um, the the Zoom meetings, and you know the the uh, the brotherhood uh, get-togethers and stuff, the virtual meetings that lodges have been doing. Um, it's like we've always, it, it's been weird to me that we've had all this technology, but we've always kind of taken it for granted, right? That like, oh, you know, big deal. You can video chat with one of your friends or something like that. Like, yeah, that's old hat. Who wants to do that? You can just go and hang out with them at a bar or a pub or something like that on Friday night and have a happy hour or something. Um, but it took, it took a scenario, a situation like this for us to really kind of embrace those technologies. And I don't think that, aspect of it is going to go away 
right? Like when we go back to Lodge, I think we're still going to have those kinds of um, uh, the, those like virtual meetings once in a while, especially considering some of them involve brothers that we haven't seen that like live far away, right? So right. that last call that we were on last night, um, mm -hmm. one of the brothers from King Solomon's Lodge, who's still, that's still his mother Lodge. He's still a member of that Lodge, but he lives out in Colorado now. I had never met him before, mm. right? And the King Solomon's brothers that were on the call hadn't talked to him in a long time. Um, but, you know, he, he's a tech guy, right? He's got a Zoom account. Hold on, he's yeah. Got, yep. You got a call coming in? Yep. How you doing? Awesome. What's up, George? Who's this? Jim Devaney. Oh, hey, Jim, brother Jim. Sorry, it's only showing me numbers. I can't, uh, it doesn't give me uh, names. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Brother Jim, what's Welcome up? Welcome to the show. Brother Jim, uh, fellow Discordian as well. How's it going? It's going well. What do you got for us, Brother Jim? All right. Toss it out here for you guys. So for both of you, what's next in your Masonic uh, adventures or aspirations? Ah, all right. All right, Ken. All right. <laughs> you want me to take the stage for that one? Yeah, go for it. So for, for me, Thanks, Brother um, Jim. what I really wanted to do, last year I was in the East, right? I was a sitting master last year, and I was really trying to um, – you know, cut back on some of the extracurricular, you know, appendant and concordant bodies that I belong to. Not not stop paying dues, but um, at least focus more on Blue Lodge, right? Mm -hmm. um, not go out as, as often as I was to commandery and to, you know, council and chapter and uh, to the grotto and stuff like that. I was really trying to focus really hard on my, uh, my Blue Lodge ritual and making sure that I was at every meeting. Um, as sitting master. And what I found now that I'm out of the chair um, is now I'm chaplain and I still feel like it's my responsibility to be there for our current master. Um, so I haven't really gone back to any of those appendant bodies yet um, that I kept telling myself I was going to, you know, you know, start learning ritual for chapter council commandery and maybe go through the line at some point, but I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. So I'm still kind of focusing on, on blue lodge. Um, that said, at some point, I would really like to to go back into um, my York Rite bodies and participate a lot more. Um, but right now, I'm still kind of still central to my Blue Lodge right now. So I'm trying to uh, spend as much time there as possible. Uh, so that's my that's my aspiration. Uh, Paul Templar, a big hello from Lockdown, Kareens, Australia. I think I said that right. Brother Paul. Ken, did we lose you? Or did you mute? No, I'm still here. Uh, that was weird. Um, my aspirations. Well, um, we have a video or an audio phone call coming up uh, April 18th for the next progression. We kind of dabbled on the fact that I'm going to be moving into the Grand Junior Warden of the Grand Commandery of the State of Connecticut. So my aspirations Masonically really are uh, remain – uh, again, I've done quite a bit, so remain uh, faithful to my mother lodge where I'm uh, the secretary until I'm replaced or my successor is chosen. <laughs> um, and eventually uh, move up through the ranks of the grand commandery and hopefully, hopefully in the next six years I will be the right eminent grand commander of the grand commandery of the state of Connecticut. It's my hope anyway pretty awesome senior leadership position yeah so long as i don't piss anybody off mm -hmm. <laughs> but those that's pretty much what i got going on uh question for you ken yeah let's see here how do i put this do you feel like freemasonry is has been hurt by this covid virus do you like um from this from different um from different points of view is is there a worry that uh oh we got another one coming in oh boy Greg Schultz. Worshipable brother Greg Schultz. Hey, brother, what's going on? What's... Hey, listen, man, I just wanted to put a plug in for the Oklahoma Masonic Indian degree team. That's uh, in Delaware in October. Hopefully, we'll still have that. So uh... I was going to say, they just canceled Christmas, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. not quite. I hope not. <laughs> and we're hoping actually to get down there. Yeah, that's that's cool. You know, 
if, if we can get a couple guys come down, that'd be awesome. So, uh, you know, like Dover Downs has uh, rooms and so forth. I'm sure they've got a bunch of mesas coming to that. It's uh, open for about 1,000 people. So uh, it's on a farm back in the back – the, uh, the incoming Grand Master is uh, – he owns a butcher shop. So uh, I'm sure we're going to eat pretty good. Very nice. Oh, man. Yeah, we. Were, I'd love to. I'd love to be down there for that. I hope all this stuff blows over by then. I think we were all planning on going down. I think when we originally talked about it, and then mm-hmm. all hell broke loose. And that. Yeah, I hear you. Man. Uh, thanks a lot, brother Greg. I appreciate it. No problem, man. Hey, uh, be safe, man. All right. I uh, hope all the brothers are safe as well. We most certainly are. All right, man. Later, later on. Have a go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about going down there. So, uh, Ray, Ray Leard, uh, Laird, I think I said that right. So I apologize if I screw, screw your name up, uh, par for the course for me. Uh, our grand commandery session will be the last of May. It should be going, I should be going in as junior warden myself in the grand Georgia commander. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations to you too. If you're going in as the, uh, grand uh, junior warden, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Big responsibility. Very cool. So uh, hopefully if we both move through the line progressively um, and he's from Georgia, I wouldn't uh, mind. Hopefully we can uh, perform a, a fraternal visit or a, yeah. That'd a be nightly cool. visit. That'd be pretty cool. So you were asking me earlier um, yes. whether I think that all of this is, is hurting or helping Freemasonry. And- well, hurting Freemasonry. Um, oh, okay. Whether it's specifically hurting Freemasonry. Two different ways. <clears throat> all, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the all, all our, our lodge has multiple petitions out right now. I think we're mm-hmm. at like six or seven um, that have either had action or not had action, or at least a first meeting. Um, and then all this hit the fan. So mm-hmm. now these petitioners are in limbo. Is it? Do you? Is there a worry that maybe they might just say, "Well, oh, the hell would it change my mind now at this point." Not because it's Freemasonry's fault that the COVID, although conspiracy theorists, I'm sure they'll come up with a, it's oh, a yeah. sort of conspiracy. Here. But you get what I'm saying. Like, um, not that it's Freemasonry's fault that the COVID thing has slowed it down, but now it's kind of like, well, I'm not even going to bother anymore, you know, or uh-huh. the brothers that haven't gone to lodge now. And I don't even know how many months we're at uh, where they're just like, yeah, no, I just don't, don't want to go anymore. I'm like, I haven't gone in three, four months. So I'm going to go back. Is there a fear of that? I mean, is there a concern? Is it a fear? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think as long as you keep those petitioning um, or brothers that are in between degrees engaged, mm-hmm. it's not a concern. Right. Or it shouldn't be. And that's really, that's on us, right? That's mm-hmm. on us as officers and as you know, brothers and mentors in the Blue Lodge to make sure that those brothers stay engaged. Right or those candidates stay engaged, right? Keep them, you know, if you're doing those, those virtual, you know, fellowship kind of meetings online, make sure, make damn sure that they are um, being invited to them. Absolutely. Right. A lot of times if somebody's petitioning, it's not like a brother that's in between degrees, but they're petitioning. They're not included on the lodge mailing list, like the email, you know, the email list, Mm. make sure those brothers are included. Make sure they're being frequently communicated with, have the master or one of the senior officers call them personally mm-hmm. and just say, hey, you know, how you doing? Is there anything we can do to help you out? You know, we were really anxious to, to do your degrees as well. We know you must be kind of chomping at the bit. Um, but, hey, we're doing these virtual fellowship meetings every Thursday night or something like that. Why don't you guys join us? Um, just to make sure that they're part of the conversation and they feel like they're, you know, they're part of the group because they are. Um, and they should be treated that way, just the same way that, you know, if everything were going fine and we were doing Masonic events and like family events and semi-public events, they would be invited to those as well. You want to make sure that they're, you know, involved in whatever communications your lodge is, lodge is doing right now with all of this stuff going on. So is there a concern? Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's one that's easily mitigated. All right. I got another one for you. So everybody's been wearing the the masks now. Everywhere you go, they got the mask. I actually got my Darth Vader mask. Or actually, I look like Bane, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> kind of cool. With the mask that I got from work today, and it's one of those big, giant respirator things. But, you know, I think, yep. what do they say now? The cloth masks are effective, even though they weren't effective before. 
right? Mm, well, I mean, more effective certain, than nothing, basically. Yes, it's going to be better than nothing. I mean, my my personal opinion on it, again, I'm not a medical professional, but, you know, they say, oh, well, the virus is like point whatever microns, right? It's super mm-hmm. tiny. And yet, the, you know, most of the masks aren't going to, you know, they would allow something that small to pass through. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as I know, this virus is not airborne. Right. Right. So it's not like there's little tiny virus particles floating around without being encapsulated in something that you have to worry about breathing in through these masks. Mm -hmm. It's usually somebody coughing and there's like, you know, respiratory stuff that comes out and there might be little virus particles embedded in that stuff. And as long as that stuff isn't getting, you know, onto your, into your eyes or (laughs) into your mouth or into your nose or something like that, you should be okay. Uh, It also kind of prevents you from touching your face. So, I read so. So here's I my. I mean, I'd rather wear a mask than wear nothing at all. It, even if it's placebo effect, man, it mm. still makes me feel better. So here's the thing, okay? And this is a question for you. Everybody's been well in Masonic lodges. We, I mean, some lodges wear white gloves, white cloth gloves, or whatever. Which, uh, yep. and everybody's usually in a suit, come from head to toe. If mm-hmm. a lodge. With you know, had a meeting with masks and gloves, could we still potentially hold lodge during hmm. all this? I is yeah. I mean, as long as there weren't any directives to the contrary, saying that hey, you know, you can't have you know ten people is too much or something like that. Ken's video um, froze again. I froze again. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. You're just frozen. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's fine. We'll deal with the video later. Um, I'll close a couple things on my computer while, while I'm talking. So I think... There you go. Yeah. As long as... I'm good now? Yep. As long as... Uh, Jim Devaney, it is airborne virus. All right. Well, I mean, let, 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 let's... Well, let's I mean, ball. is it... Even yeah, if it's I, airborne, let's say it's airborne, okay? We got to wear masks. Let's say it's... Um, you, you know, we're in Masonic Lodge. You're in a, you're in a tux or a suit. 99.9% of the lodge meetings. You're wearing white gloves. Your entire body's covered. You're wearing a mask in your face. Can we hold the lodge? Um, in my opinion, yeah. I yep. don't know why we're not doing that now. Well, I mean, because in some of the land says, look, you can't have more than whatever, five, three people gathered together in one place. Right. Um, and if you have a lodge meeting and you have more than that number of people together in one place, technically you're violating the laws of the land. Okay. All right. You're violating an executive order, which is, you know, something that we kind of abhor as Freemasons. Uh, It's a thought. It's a thought. The the other thing is we've got, you know, obviously we've talked about the fact that we have elderly brothers and we have, Mm. you know, a lot of brothers that might be in uh, medical situations that put them at higher risk if they were to get the virus. And you just never want to put any brothers in that position by saying, hey, we're holding a meeting, which de facto means if there's some some bylaw change or something that needs to be voted upon, right, the brothers that are there are going to be able to vote on it. Um, so that's always a concern, right? Brothers might right. be like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I'll put myself at risk in order to go and vote on this thing. I'm just kind of spitballing here. I'm not saying that yeah, yeah, I don't know. This is all just, going this is all just but it's like every brother questions. should have their fair shake, right? Right. If, if we're having a lodge meeting where there's going to be a vote happening, you know, just because it's happening during this kind of a situation, I don't think anybody should be excluded from it. Mm. And I don't ever want to, you know, have some brother who's in that kind of situation feel like they have to be at lodge. So, I don't know. You're going to get varied opinions on this one, I think. Yeah. No, I, and hey, it's, it was, it's a thought. It's something that uh, kind of crossed my mind. Is like if you're basically face covered and everything, but, you know, you don't think about the the smaller end of it. You know, somebody sneezes in the mask. You know, they yep. take the mask off with their hands. Well, guess what? It's on your hands now, you know? Yep. So, and then, you know, what are you doing? You know, one of the guys like, I got to go to the bathroom. Eh, well, then gloves got to come off. I mean, it's, so yeah, yes, and we're all walking in and out through the same door, right? Like right. The, the, at the end of the day, there's like one. There's usually one entrance exit mm. into the lodge to the outside world. So everybody's going to be touching that door handle, right? Yeah. Right? right. And if you're not thinking about that, or you know, you're talking with one of your brothers as you're exiting the building, you're holding the door for him, or something like that. 
like you might think you're being safe, but then all of a sudden you're you're exposed. Well, you know, I laughed too because I thought about this. I don't remember when I was thinking about it, but it's like, how could you imagine? I didn't think about the whole. Uh, we can only gather, you know, three or five. I don't even know what the number is anymore. Only five. I think it's or five less. right now in Connecticut. I think it's five. Uh, yeah. But a bunch of uh, you know cops come to bust up the meeting, and they walk into the meeting, and we're all in full on hazmat suits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, uh, okay, with the apron on. <laughs> carry on, carry on. No, no, you guys are good. Well, in Waterbury, there's plenty of uh, plenty of our brothers are police officers mm-hmm. in that town. So right. I would think most of them would be coming in wearing full hazmat suits too, and just want to be, you know, there for the meeting. Right. But yeah, I mean, you never want to get yourself into a situation <laughs> where you're going against, you know, what the current order is. Right. You never want to put your brothers in a an awkward position like that, especially if they're police officers and they're, you know, they're charged with enforcing the law. You know, don't, don't put a brother into an awkward position like that. Absolutely. That's just not worth it. All right. Bright side. We're going to talk about, uh, we're done with this, uh, quarantine stuff. Good. I hate doom and gloom, man. Yeah, me too. So here we're going to do is this is going to be the funny part is when we all finally get back to lodge and nobody remembers the ritual. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it's going to be so a many freaking things about goat that, like rodeo. So many memes on the the Masonic <laughs> Facebook pages and stuff, where it's like, why is nobody practicing ritual? This is the perfect time, right? And I fully intended to to practice my ritual. Like the first day, I started working from home, and I just haven't picked my ritual book up. I don't know why. Like, why don't we do that? Like, again, we're trying to get a York Right chapter up here, and I have yeah. yet to touch my York Right book. I, yep. <laughs> I haven't picked it up once. Um, like, I don't know if it's just that we're preoccupied with other things. I mean, everybody says they're they're dying of boredom and, well, you know, going that, stir crazy. But it's like we have this perfect way to stay busy by reading ritual and practicing. So you got two But people. also our family's around, right? So right. there's right. a limited amount of stuff you can practice when your family's around. So if they're okay. single, if the Mason is a single guy or doesn't or lives alone or whatever the oh, case yeah, no may be, you got two things. One, he's either A not going to touch the ritual book and just sit in the couch and eat cheese puffs all freaking day or I mean, I two, that too. or two he's actually rearranged the furniture in his living room to model a masonic lodge so he can practice his floor work <laughs> i mean i'm kind of tempted to do that, that would be really uh, right that would be well. great yeah just, that would be cool you're running around with one of those uh the sifter uh, not the sifter the whisk you're running around with a whisk like it's the uh the uh uh, Marshall's baton. That would be freaking yeah. hilarious. Colander pot yep. in your head because you're uh, the master of the lodge. Oh god, that would be great. Yep. Like Somebody's like got to make a meme from this. Handle from one of my brooms and use it as like a staff and That's practice senior deacon. Like right. Oh man, I'm, then, I'm gonna do this. I think my <laughs> wife is like listening to me say this right now, and she's probably like giving me the stink eye from the other room. But I'm totally doing. And this. And then all you hear is this when the Amazon guy comes to the door. Who goes there? <laughs> yeah, sir. <exactly. laughs> Who comes here? <laughs> Who comes here? Oh, uh, Amazon? Boom! Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Tyler. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I think I will pick up. Now that we keep harping on yeah. it, I think I'm really going to make a concerted effort tonight. After the kids are in bed, mm-hmm. I'm going to check back with like a cup of tea and crack open the ritual book and try to learn a new lecture that i don't know i I, that's one of my fears honest to god when we come out of this and we're all back in lodge and everything is that no one's gonna know i mean with the exception of the wardens that i think here at morningstar i don't know what your lodge is doing but they still meet they come up here just the three they open they do their ritual they close just so we're remaining you know whatever the word is uh State of communications State are still of communicate. happening. Yeah, they're still doing it, so it's still being done. We're not violating bylaws or anything. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I really hope that Masons are at home at least thumbing through your ritual or brushing up on it or continuing what your your chair is because the worst thing yeah. is to come back out of this when you – I mean, granted, not all brothers – are uh, are just home, right? They're not just home. They are working from home. Worship brother Joe, you yourself are working from home. Yeah, Jim Delvaney. T. <laughs> Laugh aloud. I don't know. T. You're a Tory. Yeah, he, he knows me. He knows me <laughs> way too well. For that. I'm not drinking tea. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's um, yeah, especially like if you're 
in a particular chair, you're in an officer's chair, you're always doing a particular lecture, at least try to stay up on that. Yeah. But it's kind of the same thing that happens. Like this is analogous to what happens when we go dim for like Mm -hmm. the summer Mm -hmm. or for the Christmas season or something like that. Like, I don't know how it works in your lodge. I'm assuming all Masonic lodges are pretty similar in this way. Mm -hmm. You come back from one of those breaks and everybody has kind of a rough time. Yeah. No matter how good you are at ritual Herding work cats, or, goat rodeo, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Uh, like Paula, that first meeting is always a little tough. Paula H. Ensley, let me know if you guys know anyone that needs a postcard to make them smile. My kids are sending postcards to our local Masonic family. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's super cute. That's great. You know, uh, for those so those um, Masons who you know, are home and, and want to do stuff for the community, that is a great idea, Paula. That is awesome. That is an amazing yeah. idea. Um, we could still do things from uh, from our couch, you know, to, mm-hmm. to do. I mean, you, you could still go to stores. I mean, you have to wait in a line, but whatever. Uh, at least here in Connecticut, you do. But I mean, you know, yeah. pick up a pick up a pack of uh, you know cards. And actually, I have uh, I, I have Mason cards or like get well soon cards. I have, but I never thought about having a Mason card. I got birthday cards too, that actually have the square and compass it birthday. Yeah, or having having your kids decorate one having, yeah. is super cool. I mean, like I'm thinking about some of the brothers that I talked to on the phone earlier today, and I would imagine if they got a little postcard from my five year old with like a little square and compasses or like a little you know, a little master wearing like a top hat or something like that. They would, it would just make their day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially the older brothers. But uh, Paul, that is a fantastic idea. That is great. That's probably one of the coolest things I've heard. uh, Cause most of it's all doom and gloom. So that is, that is really, really cool. Yep. Take Uh, the time to make somebody smile. Paul, if you want to uh, blast on our page, um, if you want to put something up on our Facebook page, you're more than welcome to, uh, put a plug on there of where, you know, they can reach you or excuse me, uh, you could just ask who wants them. And uh, I hope that everybody who's interested uh, will, will definitely write underneath that link. Yep. Send a direct message to either me or George and we can get it up on the, the public Facebook page. So I have a little confession. I'm a little worried about Joe. Joe said he was about 30 minutes out in Newington. And uh, should we do a wellness check call on him? I feel like we should. Is there any way right, you can call him, him on your cell phone? Isn't it wired into the soundboard? I most certainly can actually. Right. actually just can. let him know that he's actually on the air. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. Oh, no. no. This is going to go bad. He actually might not even answer because if he's still driving, here we go. Let's give it a shot. And he's got Bluetooth in his car. FaceTime audio. No, I'll just call his mobile number. Yeah, do it. Wait. He can ask us Masonic questions. Uh oh. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> what did you do? I tried calling him off my computer and it ended up uh he said not gonna make it stuck on any four. All right. Oh uh, well that's, that's no much that's all right. Well, at least we know he's okay. That's the important thing. Yeah, he's good. He's not gonna make it, no worries. I can deal without getting uh, made fun of being a midget for, for one night. So Yeah, seriously. And you know what? It's kind of weird that he's stuck in traffic on 84. Uh, Rafferty traffic isn't really a thing right now. Ra- uh, James Rafferty said there's an accident on 84. Oh, it's okay. through the Mix Master, which is, I don't even know. It, it's like a... So yeah, we, how do you describe the Mix Master to somebody who has no idea what it is? Take all the aprons in your lodge, all your cloth aprons, stick them in the dryer. Come back 20 minutes later. That's what the mix. Wow, like. you know what? That's a great analogy. It's perfect, right? Eight it's plus, perfect. yeah. <laughs> exactly what it feels like when you're driving through that area of Waterbury, man. Holy crap! Paula uh, writes, um, "We'll post something on your page. I already got you guys' address. Postcard is on the way." Oh, thank you, Paula. Oh, that's, that's sweet. Thank that's you. awesome. Thank you. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, no, that's 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 the mix master. That's what the mix master in Waterbury, Connecticut, is. Yeah, it's, like taking, it's basically a huge, it's like a huge highway interchange and it's always under construction and probably will be for the next 10 years, <laughs> at least. Uh, so when do you think we're going to get back to Lodge? When do you think that this is all going to... Oh, man, you're asking me all the tough questions. I am well, I mean, our governor... Here well, you're not coming state, up with questions for me, too. so i got right. to fire them to you. Did you, uh, did you see the governor's uh, press conference today? I don't watch him. Okay. So, so our governor here in Connecticut, yeah, he's not my favorite guy either, but whatever. Like he is the governor. 
He did a, uh, a press conference today and made the announcement. We were waiting for, actually, it was supposed to be tomorrow. He was, I guess it was by April 10th he was going to make the call on uh, whether public schools were going to, you know, when they were going to reopen. I guess, what is it, May 20th? May 20th. May 20th, at least until May 20th, uh, public schools in Connecticut will be closed until that date. So, yes, all of us that are uh, part-time homeschooling educators at this point um, wept a little bit over that decision, but it is what it is. So I guess if he's thinking that May 20th is the next check-in date, I would say by June 1st, things will hopefully start getting back to what we considered to be normal. Mm. That's my hope. I'm not a statistician. I, you know, I don't what look degree at are you the, looking? the models. I'm not a medical professional. That's my hope. What degree are you looking forward to? Optimist. What degree are you looking forward to in Freemasonry? Who, me? When we finally get back, oh. what degree are you looking forward to? Um, the Entered Apprentice, because it's a rebirth. Mm, very nice. Yep. yep. Well, I'm going to have to go with Master Mason. Okay, why? Because you fall and then rise. Okay. All right. Oh, a little symbology okay. in that one, too. I like that too. So I mean, really, anything to do with just just walking into my lodge will be awesome after all of this nonsense. So. Yeah, no, definitely will be. So Joe's got that uh, Revel Stoke over there, that peanut butter stuff. The what? Oh, the peanut butter whiskey. Yeah, yeah it's not my favorite either. Mm -hmm. It's very trendy right now, though. Very popular. I don't know why, but yeah. It's, Giovanni Gariga. Gariga? I apologize if I butchered it. I'm taking my Master Mason when Lodge is back open. Can't wait. Um, yeah, I feel bad for you, Giovanni. That 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 sucks. <laughs> yep. Uh, I feel really bad. I mean, uh, Alex, uh, Alex, who was up here on the podcast a couple episodes ago, uh, the tattoo guy, he's actually responsible for that. He's the one responsible for that. If you want to see him or... Uh, talk to him about uh he, he's, he's a couple episodes back you can check him out um and i think on facebook he goes by alex dominus and i think he mm -hmm. put in uh, uh his uh instagram is the best way to get a hold of him on that but um what was i saying yeah he's a fellow craft and uh mm -hmm. he's kind of stuck in limbo too and then there's other people uh that our petition to the lodge and it, it sucks i feel bad for him because it's like you know they're so excited they can't wait to take it and then Boom, that's it. Shut our doors down, can't do anything. That's yeah, uh, kind but, of you know, all the more reason to make sure that we're staying, keeping these brothers engaged and um, <laughs> and these campus engaged and making sure we're keeping them in the loop and telling them, hey, you know, we're, we're all in the same boat. If there's anything we can do to help, help you out in the meantime, let us know. Uh -huh. That's what the fraternity is all about and make sure that we show them that that's... To learn your ritual, too, you know, and not, you know, suck through it now that we're not doing anything we really don't have any excuses after all this like we better we better be on our a game when we return to lodge that's all right. i can say uh community service what's the first community service thing you guys got going on um well it really depends on when the state kind of opens back up and we're we're able to do those kinds of things again mm -hmm. um the next thing that we have let's say your trestle board code. didn't get erased your say the trestle board didn't get erased. Yeah, I have to say, actually pull it up. Oh, I'm okay. Master I don't know, oh no, no, no! I didn't know if there was some big event that your lodge does. That's why, because I know our car yeah. show is coming up in uh, September. I think yep. that's the only big thing we got going on is our. No, well, I was there last year. That was a good time. I'm looking forward to doing it again this year. I hope. I hope to God everything's back to normal by then, man. Because that was a really good time. Uh the car show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Papa George was a uh, groping better boop, which I got yelled yeah. for, but whatever. We um, had a booth there. We didn't actually do a live broadcast, though, did we? No, we didn't. We were going to, but uh, what ended up happening is the car show wasn't as big as it was in prior years because I believe that there was another, I think the Lions Club does a massive one, and I think we put it on the same weekend. I could be wrong, but uh, oh. um, this year coming, we're expecting a pretty big turnout. I mean, especially people are going to want to get out. And realistically... Uh, we could probably still do the car show even if they say, you know, well, no, we can't, huh? 
because it's outside, it's still a gathering. They don't even want people gathering mm-hmm. outside anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's just having a lot of people in one area, regardless of whether it's indoors or outdoors, <laughs> kind of against right now. But you know what? Um, I don't know. I mean, I thought last year it was pretty well attended. I mean, I guess you guys were probably trying to fill up all those spaces that you had cordoned off and everything, but I didn't seem to see that many that were you know, empty. No, there was, seemed to be a lot of cars there. A lot of people came to like view the cars. Mm, like, you know, the yeah, yeah. No, it was still a good time. Was there like it seemed like a pretty big deal to me mm. from an uh, outsider looking in. Eminent Sir Knight Ray Leard, we have a new mass, a new mason just raised. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> we have a new mason just raised night before all this happened. Now he can't come to a meeting. I feel bad for him. Yeah, it uh, seems to be kind of the mo. <laughs> It sucks, though, because it's like, you know, again, I don't feel it. You know, Ken, really, you don't feel it because, you know, we've already, we're not, you know, not that we're not hungry as Freemasons anymore. It's not mm-hmm. like we don't, you know, uh, it's not like we don't thirst for it or want to to be part of the craft again or, you know, see each other. But for those that are coming up through, it's exciting. Like, it's, this is mm-hmm. new and, you know, I'm excited. I can't wait to get to my next degree and I can't wait to do this and, at least that's how yeah. I was. I couldn't wait to get to my next degree. And then when I got to the master, I couldn't wait to, or the master Mason, excuse me, not the master lodge. When I got to the master Mason, I couldn't wait to become an officer. And then as a, an officer, I couldn't wait to become master. And it's, it's always been kind of like a, um, an excitement as to what the next step is. And, you know, mm-hmm. for, for me, I'm all washed up for the most part in blue lodge. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, we miss Lodge as much as the next guy, right? right. As much as a candidate, I think, I would say. Um, like, I'm getting to the point where I, I, you know, I'm still meeting with my Lodge brothers, you know, online and virtually and stuff like that. And it's that's not the fine. same, though. It's not the same. But it's, yeah, it really isn't the same. Like, I really miss, and I think Worshipful Brother Joe was saying it last episode, like, you you know, Lodge is your, your safe space. It's your one place you can go where you know you're going at least once a month. Mm. Um, where you get to be with, you know, some of your really best friends, um, and get away from everything, get away from work, get away, get away from, you know, any troubles you might be having anywhere else in your life, um, and be in one, one safe spot and to not have that, man, it does get to you. Right. You know, not for nothing. You're also sitting there, you're on a zoom thing. You're talking to your brothers, you're trying to have a conversation and, you know, I either got the, the, the daughter and the brother freaking, you know, scrapping it out in the background. So now you're you're looking, you're trying to pay attention to what the brother is saying, but you also got one eye as a parent. You you know how your eye, your vision splits as a parent, right? Any parent knows this. You got one eye on what I'm you're doing, doing. It right now. <laughs> you got one eye on what you're doing and one eye down the hallway while the brother and sister are beating shit out of one another. Yep. So you're not, you're kind of half paying attention. Whereas when we come to lodge, um, you're, you're, this is all you care about. Like this is yeah. it's right in front of you, and it's it, it's just more. I don't know. I miss yep, it. It's dedicated time. I really do miss coming to lodge, and uh, I, I hope that those who are in waiting or interested in Freemasonry, once this is over, just take the leap, just do it, and uh, yep. you'll find it's much more gratifying than you could ever possibly imagine. Yep. All right. So, uh, what do you say? Yeah, I think we wrap it up. I'm trying to pull up the trestle board, but I guess my network connection is kind of crappy because I can't open it right now. Yeah, so I'm a, sure we'll talk about that next time. Is that is that your computer glow or is that just your skin glow? Because it looks no, like you have that's a more, my computer glow. It that's the like glowing have, warmth of my giant 27 inch curved monitors, <laughs> filling in all of my wrinkles. Yeah, and the 2,000 watt like death lamp that I have in my kitchen. <laughs> Look, man, my kitchen is my office, and my office is in my kitchen for at least another few weeks. Um, Deal with it. <laughs> all right, brother. What do you say? You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I think it's probably dinner time. Yep. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for who called in and had any questions. Again, uh, you can uh, – you can hit us up at any point in time. We're always willing and able to answer questions. And, uh, I mean, realistically, you got nothing else going on. You might as well ask the questions. Yeah, save George's cell phone number and, you know, ring him in the middle of the night if you're <laughs> across the pond. You won't mind. James Rafferty. Call collect, too. Go figure. Rafferty, already in the live link. George, call me when you finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
That's that's usually uh, a bad sign. That's usually, that usually a bad sign. Yeah. Something that means I did something. Like, call me after. He's gonna point out how many times I dropped the f bomb. I don't think I did this time, but I'm yeah. sure. No, I think we were pretty good. Yeah, we were pretty good. All right, brother. Let's wrap it up. So for the you Freemasons guys. podcast, I am right worshipful brother George Mudry signing off, and I'm worshipful brother Ken signing off. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe, y'all. Uh, shut down the audio recording, and we're gonna say goodbye to Facebook. Thank you all for yeah. tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Stay safe. Have we a appreciate good one. your support. Have a good one, everyone.